toxic masculinity comes from a lack of boys being kept at bay and taught by healthy men who are invested in their lives. You know, when, when the first male authority figure that a kid comes up against is either like a, a gang leader or the police, they haven't been trained. Mm -hmm. They've been surrounded by females and brought up on, on other children. Mm -hmm. And that's where we get really bad outcomes um, and prisons full of kids that don't have fathers mm -hmm. because good men didn't teach them how to be men. Women cannot teach men how to be men. Help me out a bit with this. Uh, I have four children that I love to bits. Uh, and I've made the observation from time to time that anecdotally when they were growing up, what I noticed was that they tended to look to mum for warmth and nurture and to me for play and stimulation and what might be called emotional excitement. Yeah. Uh, now, some people would say, well, that's just gender stereotyping. It's not real. Well, people live up to their stereotypes all the time. That's why they exist. Have you ever seen a woman uh, out, out front of the, the church tossing her toddler up in the air? No, no, she's standing by, biting her nails because she's terrified that her husband is constantly throwing that baby around. Yeah, so those differences in parenting are real, observable, and measurable, and they don't stem from the metaphorical uh, patriarchal boogeyman. They stem from the differences in biology, right? Women have higher levels of oxytocin um, that maximizes bonding and attachment, especially in the first three years. Women are wired for nurture. They just are. Men have some oxytocin, but not as much as their testosterone, and testosterone brings the fun. Right, so really you can say that women tend to care for kids and dads tend to play with kids. Mm -hmm. And kids need both, right? They need a mom that is making sure that they brush their teeth and go to bed on time. And they need a dad who's like, actually, let's just leave for the day and do this, do this crazy hike. And it's amazing how these two things complement one another. This exists in every society. Right? This is not some norm that is being placed over the top of Americans or, or Japanese. This is what men and women do naturally because of their biological differences, because of their brain chemistry differences. And the amazing thing is it optimizes child development. Mm. Like we've got this one study in the book that I just think was fascinating. Kids that have a dad that read to them have larger, better cognitive development, but it's not because dad chooses different stories to read, it's because he reads the same story in a different way. Because the mom is saying, oh, how many pigs do you see on the page? And the dad's saying, where do you think that pig got all of those bricks? Like, I don't, did, uh -huh. there's no brick making factory in this story. Right. I wonder what he had to do to get it. Do you think that he had to like head down to Home Depot or what? Like there, men and women think differently, they interact differently, they have physical differences and that maximizes child development. Uh, you know, even just things like when kids are with mom, they tend to be doing things that emphasize their fine motor skills, right? We've all had our kid Mom's chopping. crafting. Yeah, crafting with them. preparing food. That's right, and yep. it's all things that have to do with their fingers. But when they're with dad, they're naturally wrestling, climbing, digging, running. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not because anybody was telling dad, hey, you should go race to the mailbox with your kid. It is naturally what dads do. Right. Warren Farrell makes this point. It's quite mm -hmm. interesting. He says that dads are instinctively better at fathering yes. than they think they are and that the community thinks they are. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, and you've got- In defense of dads who seem pretty maligned to me these days. They absolutely The common are. character yeah. you think of Homer Simpson. You know, if you've got a dad now in a movie, he's the dag. Mm -hmm. He's irrelevant. He's a bit of an embarrassment. Yeah. He doesn't bring anything to the equation. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's masculinity, not really how it is. Masculinity has really um, taken it in the shorts, so to speak, these days. Um, the value of men um, and the importance they bring to family, to society, um, has really been maligned. Um, I, I can't imagine having done family without my husband when there's no heavy in the house. I mean, wait till your father gets home is still a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I didn't have that in my back pocket, um, yeah, my, kid, my kids, especially my boys, would, would run roughshod over me. 
you said something there, if I'm understanding it, that's uh, very interesting and I would have thought pretty provocative. Yeah. Toxic masculinity yeah. is the product actually of absent fathers? Yeah. Non-involved fathers? Yes. Not of involved fathers? That's correct. When you when Does the data really clearly show that? Well, if um, I, what was the what was the study with the um, the gentleman that went in and studied the prisons, and he said mm -hmm. that it wasn't a, a po it was a population of fatherless yeah. Men. He said he said prisons are holding tanks for right. fatherless boys. Yeah, right. And that's holding what we tanks see. for fatherless boys. Right. Yeah, it's like seventy to eighty-five percent of people that are in state prisons are fatherless, and so I heard are, I heard someone quote those figures at a meeting I was in Sydney. Mm -hmm. And a fellow yelled out, no, 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 it's higher than that. It's 95%. It could be than and everybody that. turned on him and said, why do you know? And he said, I was a prison warden for 30 yeah, years. Well. That's right. And he said, kids who, but men who have been effectively fathered don't come to prison. That, right. They were his words. Right. Yep. That's exactly right. This is a challenge for men. So let's not let men off the hook. They need to be involved, surely. They need, right. but, but the culture says you're irrelevant. Well, yes. So we've got to get that message through. Right. Uh, uh, we, we have to teach women to value men and don't you think most mothers instinctively do i don't think our cultural narrative does no. yeah. I right think so i think either. that especially i mean we just had a decision seven years ago that said that men are optional in the institution of marriage mm -hmm. so now do you think that you can emphasize that fathers are not optional when it comes to raising kids in fact the exact opposite is true right we have now made husbands and wives optional in marriage policy. And at this point, I don't know of any federal or government institution that would even say that children should have a father and should have a mother, because now that kind of talk constitutes discrimination. Well, right, they're taking it off of, um, uh, of birth certificates, they're changing yeah. birth certifi certificates rather, um, out of all state documents. Mm -hmm. Yep, they're neutering even the word father and the word mother, yeah. right? Because now inclusivity and tolerance right. supersedes. You wouldn't right? want to hurt feelings. Yeah, but I think you're right. I think most women instinctually would say, well, this man is important. He's important to me. I need help. I need support. But that's not the dominant cultural narrative that we're hearing today. And culture is being shaped by law.